Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning. And I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a blessed Sunday and a happy Father's Day. And in the news of this morning, man shot dead on Lady Musgrave Road. A man is dead and another hospitalized following a gun attack on Lady Musgrave Road in St. Andrew on Saturday evening. According to the Jamaica Constabulary Forces Corporate Communications Unit, the incident reportedly took place around 6 p.m. in the vicinity of the Spick and the Span dry cleaners. The circumstances surrounding the incident remain unclear, but it is understood that the shooting was carried out by gunmen traveling on a motorcycle. When the shooting subsided, two men were found suffering from gunshot wounds. They were taken to hospital, where one of the men was pronounced dead and the other admitted. Big Sen, one of two men held on lottery scamming charges. Two men, one of them an aspiring dancehall artist who goes by the name Big Sen, were arrested last week in separate operations targeting lottery scamming suspects. In the first operation, conducted on June 12 by the major organized crime and anti corruption agency in collaboration with the Specialized Operations Unit of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. 29-year-old Reggie Stewart was apprehended during a raid at the Cedar Grove Estate in Portmore, St. Catherine. A news release from MOCA said that during a search of Stewart's premises, several items associated with lottery scamming, including multiple technological devices used in defrauding individuals overseas, were seized. Stewart was later charged with breaches of the Law Reform Fraudulent Transactions Special Provisions Act, MOCA said. In the second joint operation, led by the Jamaica organizations linked to Telemarketing Task Force and the comprising of law enforcement personnel from MOCA, the Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Investigations Branch, and the Jamaica Defense Force, Big Sen, whose real name is Tevin Parker, was arrested at a residence in Stony Hill, St. Andrew, on June 14. Parker was found with two associates at a residence where a detailed search revealed a lead list, bank cards, and other lottery scamming paraphernalia. He has been formally charged with the possession of identity information and the possession of access devices. His associates have been released pending further investigations. Parker's court date is yet to be determined, Mocha said in the release. Mocha and its partners have a very strong collaborative relationship, bolstered in some instances by several MOUs. These two sets of arrests demonstrate that this approach to crime fighting continues to bear significant fruit. The release quotes Mocha's Director of Communications, Major Basil Jarrett. He urged the public to assist in the fight against the lottery scamming and other major organized crimes by the Mocha tip line at 888-662-2847 or contacting the agency via www.mocha.gov.jm. The agency is also reminding the public that the tip line is managed by Crime Stop and all calls are 100% anonymous and confidential. 41-year-old man charged with breaches of the Firearms Act A 41-year-old man was arrested and charged with the possession of a prohibited weapon and unauthorized the possession of ammunition after a pistol and several rounds were allegedly seized at his home on Friday, June 14. Charged is Kingsley James, a mason of Mount Pelier Sandy Bay in Hanover. Reports from the Sandy Bay police are that a targeted operation was conducted at James's home during which 35 9mm rounds of ammunition and 1.45 round of ammunition were found in a dresser drawer in a bedroom. A chrome .45 pistol was also found in a water drum outside the house. James's court date is being finalized. St. Anne woman slapped with larceny charges over missing pastries from restaurant. A 34-year-old businesswoman of Exchange Autorius in St. Anne has been charged with larceny as a servant and a simple larceny after an audit revealed that more than $3 million worth of cocoa bread and patties from a local restaurant were unaccounted for. Charged is Shanna Llewellyn. According to reports from the Otrias police, a manager for the restaurant, for which Llewellyn was a supervisor, 
realized that the inventor was missing during a visit to the location in July 2023. An audit was subsequently done, which revealed that the restaurant lost the revenue amounting to $3,659,742. Llewellyn was subsequently taken into custody and a question-and-answer interview done in the presence of her attorney, after which she was charged with the offenses. Her court date is being finalized. Brown Burke wants a clear communication on fire to be caused by Sparkle program. Member of Parliament for St. Andrew Southwestern, Angela Brown Burke, said that some Jamaicans are still unclear of the fire that should spark through the shared prosperity through accelerated improvement to our road network spark program. Brown Burke was speaking at the Southwest Spark Program consultation meeting in her constituency on Friday. The MP said thus far it is unknown if the spark program will flicker and grow or the spark will lead to a big fire. As much as I welcome a program aimed at dealing with the infrastructure in the community, which I think is really needed, I could not speak without mentioning some of my concerns about the spark program. And the biggest concern always for me as a representative of the people is that I am not set up with a basket to carry water. I always want to make sure that is not a basket I have to carry water. She said as she attempted to elaborate. What do I mean by that? The approximately $150 million per constituency sounds like a lot of money until I start to break it down. And I am hoping that someone along the program would talk to us a little about cost so people have a realistic expectation as to the kilometers that I can do. For some who may not be able to measure, that you will have a good idea as to how much road that means for persons in Southwest St. Andrew with three divisions. I think that's going to be important. She shared that when meetings discussing the program are held and the input of community members is solicited, expectations are set high and the clear communication is necessary to ensure that a person's presumptions are realistic. When you bring the community together like this and ask persons to talk about the road that they would want to see fixed, you set up this expectation that all of what you come and put on the table and speak about that they will be able to fix. And if that is not so, then somebody must tell us, she said. Somebody must make sure that our expectations are realistic. Seventeen children left behind by the two Jamaican fathers killed in Canada. The two Jamaican men, Delroy Uncle Georgia Parks and the Seymour Dapper Gibbs, who were killed in the June 2 shooting incident in the parking lot of the North Albion Collegiate Institute in northwest Toronto, have left a combined 17 children to mourn their loss. According to the Toronto Police Service, Parks 61, who was originally from St. Anne's Bay in St. Anne, Jamaica, before migrating to Canada in 1991, was killed while playing a game of dominoes. Four other people, including Gibbs, were shot and injured in the shooting incident that took place about 10.53 p.m. TPS said a group of men was gathered in the parking lot area after a football game when a dark pickup truck drove up. Two suspects exited the vehicle and shot at the group of men before fleeing the area in the truck. Media reports indicate that more than 50 shots were fired at the group. TPS said responding officers located five victims suffering from gunshot wounds when they arrived at the location. All were transported to hospital where parts of a Woodstock address died while being treated. Gibbs died in hospital three days later on June 5. Parks was buried on Saturday at the St. Philip's Anglican Church Cemetery at Dixon Road, Toronto, following a funeral service at Oak Ridge Bible Chapel. He has left behind 11 children, three of whom the news understands were born in Jamaica before he left for Canada. His children are Tashawn, Thornia, Windell, Romaine, Damian, Ricardo, Halle, Jordan, Jaden, Justin, and Joshua. Sophia Don Gibbs' mother-in-law told the Canadian media that he had five boys and one girl. She said he was kind, liked to cook, and liked to make jokes. Reports are that Gibbs had returned to Canada shortly after visiting his last child in Jamaica, who is less than a year old. Parks was Dunn's cousin, and another of the victims is her uncle. Dunn said she last spoke to Gibbs the night before he died. Instead of one funeral, we will have two funerals, she said. She added that nobody should die like that. 
He's just uh, gone too soon. The baby didn't even touch a one-year-old yet. Guys, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please join us uh, this afternoon at uh, 2 p.m. for another news update.